Monte Carlo analysis is a common tool for evaluating volume metrics. In the tutorial, we include a one page PowerPoint slide overview of the Monte Carlo analysis and a demonstration of the Excel Monte Carlo tool. Because uncertainty exists in each term of the volumetric equation, a range of volumetric outcomes exists with some particular probability. The Monte Carlo analysis helps to quantify the range of these outcomes. It is referred to as a probabilistic assessment as opposed to the singular mean deterministic. Each term of the volumetric equation has a distribution of uncertainty that can be expressed as a probability density function, or PDF, for example, the normal or Gaussian distribution. The inputs to the Monte Carlo tool are the distributions mean, minimum, maximum, and the number of trials. Let's take a look at these typical distributions used in assessments. The normal or Gaussian distribution is commonly used but has these tails which allow for some extreme values. And so in some cases the beta distribution is used which truncates these tail sections at the ends. And another common type of distribution used is the triangular which is easy to use and allows you to easily change the mean value which can skew or create asymmetric distributions if needed. There has been much discussion in the literature as to what values to use for the minimum and maximum values. It has been recommended that we use the minimum and maximum of the mean values. Let me explain. If we have three wells, A, B, and C, and we have some porosity ranges recorded in these wells. In this well, A, it's 4 to 12, 6 to 14, and 8 to 16 for the different wells. And the mean values are 8, 10, and 12. So the recommendation is for the min, the most likely and max, we should use the average. So we'd use a min of 8, a mean of 10, and a max of 12. A number of the publications suggest that we use the standard error of the mean as the minimum and maximum, or plus or minus three standard deviations. It has also been recommended that we use 10,000 trials in the Monte Carlo simulation to sufficiently reduce the standard error. Standard probabilistic outputs for the volumetric assessment generally include an overlaid frequency and exceedance probability chart with a table of statistics. In this example here, I'm showing the probability chart, which has the exceedance probability with the green line, showing the P95, P50, and P5 cases, and a frequency distribution is shown with the blue line. Volumetric Monte Carlo outputs have been shown to be biased in two ways. One, human bias towards underestimating the uncertainty. And two, Monte Carlo analysis treat each term of the equation as independent, when in fact several of the terms are correlated. For example, it has been shown that porosity and hydrocarbon saturation are usually strongly correlated. Also, net to gross and porosity is often correlated. In a paper by Ma, 2011, he demonstrated a bi- and trivariate parametric approach, resolving the correlation by combining porosity and hydrocarbon saturation into a singular term, or alternatively, combining net to gross, porosity, and hydrocarbon saturation into a singular term. He also points out that not taking the correlations into consideration caused the volumes to be underestimated in reservoirs with heterogeneous properties. Moving on to the Excel Monte Carlo volumetrics calculator, let's take a brief overview. There are six worksheets. There's the README file. There's a calculator. There is a oil plays simulator, a gas plays simulator, and then five and six represent the oil and gas play plots, which are used for your summary presentations. It's important to note that the Monte Carlo simulations can take some time to calculate and save. So it's recommended that we switch from automatic default mode to manual calculation mode. There are two ways to do this. The first way, which I prefer, is under the formulas toolbar, go to calculator options 
and click on manual and at that point when you want to execute the Monte Carlo simulation you can click on calculate worksheet or optionally hit shift plus the F9 key. Another way to switch to manual mode is under file under options and look under formulas and you'll see a button here for manual and again you can hit the shift F9 to execute the simulation. Worksheet number two, the calculator, is a generic calculator which runs 500 trials. You simply put in the minimum, the most likely, and the maximum values and then it will do all the processing for the Monte Carlo as soon as you hit the control shift key. The triangular distribution was taken from an online paper by Don E. Wright and I've included in here you have the trial simulations, some Monte Carlo statistics, and a frequency chart which builds the, the distribution. So for example, before running in a demonstration, let's switch off the automatic calculation mode. So we're on the formula bar. We go to calculation options and switch to manual. Now you can only execute this by either clicking on the calculate worksheet or shift F9. I'll use shift F9. So let's change these values to let's say 20, 50, and 100. So we're going to make a asymmetrical distribution. So nothing has changed. I'll hit shift F9 and it's changed. I'm going to hit it again and you'll see that each time you do this with 500 trials you get a slightly different distribution. So by going to 10,000 trials this will make the changes less dramatic. So worksheet number three is the oil plays calculator. So for the oil plays we'd come over here and we'd populate these yellow cells. So for area gross thickness, net to gross, porosity, the hydrocarbon saturation or 1 minus SW, the GOR we populate and when you put this in the GOR and run the calculator it will automatically calculate the B sub O and a recovery efficiency. I should note that you cannot put the same value in all three cells if you don't want these to change use a very small difference in the values so like in this example here I've used 0 0.99991 and 1.0001 so you can't they all can't be the same when you run the simulation it will output these values here, so this is for reporting, these are the summary inputs that you've put in for each parameter and it runs the in place volume in barrels, the recoverable volume in barrels, that's if you have a, uh, a recovery efficiency that's other than one and it'll also calculate out the solution gas. So I'll just run this real quickly, shift F9 you can see it's taking a while to run this. And you saw the numbers change. It gives you a histogram of the in place oil volume and the recoverable volume and the recoverable volume of gas. And on the very right of the worksheet, it gives you a distribution of your inputs for each parameter. The gas play is basically the same thing. But in this case here, you'll have to put in your B sub G over here on the right. And it will calculate the gas in place, the gas recoverable, and the condensate. Also in here, so we're looking at the, the input parameters, you'll have to put in a range for your liquid to gas ratio. Now let's take a look at the oil play plots worksheet. This gives you a summary of your Monte Carlo simulation. It has two charts for the oil play, the recoverable oil and the recoverable solution gas. 
In our case, we set the recovery efficiency to 1, so it's really an in-place volumetric. So you get your exceedance probability curve of oil in green, and it charts up your P95, your P50, and your P05 cases. It also shows in blue a histogram or frequency distribution of the data. We also get below here, this is our, your summary statistics for your mean, your median, your P50, P95, P5, your count, which is your number of trials, your minimum, and your maximum. So the workflow to make these charts is this. As you scroll down, and you can either go to the oil plays and copy your recoverable oil and your gas solution, and then you need to sort these individually, these columns, from the smallest to the largest, for both columns, in, again, individually. And then it knows your probability, your exceedance probability. An easier way to do this instead of manually is I have built a macro, and you just click on the button, and it copies and pastes these values. So just to demonstrate, let's delete these. and I'll click the button, and that's copied and sorted them. Now each time you do this, it comes over here and calculates the frequency. So if you look in this cell here, it knows the frequency function, which is used to build these blue histograms. So you hit Shift F9, and you saw that those changed, and then if you want to rescale these, you highlight the box and you hit the rescale axis. And the same with this one. And then you have your plots are ready. I've put a note in here again to, rem to remind you that you need to hit the Shift F9 to recalculate. And the manual calculation mode will be activated for all open workbooks. So if I went back to the, my volumetrics workbook, I'd have to hit Shift 9 to do any calculations. So when you're done with this Monte Carlo, turn off the manual mode, and then you'll be done with the Monte Carlo calculator. The gas play plots worksheet is basically the same thing. It will copy the data and sort it. I'll hit sh Shift F9, and it recalculates the frequencies. Highlight the plot, hit rescale, hit rescale, and you're done. So now that I'm done with this workbook, I'm going to go to formulas, calculation options, and go back to automatic mode. And notice down here that it's calculating and doing the saving process which takes a while. And now I'll just exit the worksheet. If I hit save, it will take a while, and I'll do that, and then that will be done.